All right, welcome back to the show. We are here in the Bait Lab. Bait Lab presentations brought to you by Sportco and Outdoor Emporium. Pretty much everything you see here can be purchased through Sportco or Outdoor Emporium. Check them out, sportco.com. So recently at the sportsman shows we attended, a number of you came up to me and were talking or discussing, asking the differences between the standard bobber dogging presentation and kind of what I refer to as the ultralight that we showed or demonstrated last year out on the OP with Bobby Kratzer. And there are significant differences in how you rig those. The idea is kind of the same in that you're dragging lead and keeping your presentation down. The bobber's assisting with the current flow and keeping your presentation in the travel lanes of where the fish like to hang out. But there's a number of different things or, or you know, options that we have and what we're actually presenting in the water. And I'll get into how we rig those two different presentation specifically a little later here but first of all let's take a look at the top of the table kind of starts with the float you know floats have come a long ways we have floats now designed and no longer a taper float you can still use those if you choose but the bobber dog and floats have become pretty popular this uh, is designed to lie flat on top of the water unlike most of your floats that were fishing vertical this is a horizontal presentation with the water pushing at the back side of the float driving it down river dragging your lead and presentation along as it goes and between this uh, actually floating horizontal in the water and your lead dragging on the bottom it has a way to navigate and find the travel lanes where the fish like to be so back to the tabletop here you know, it also is working in conjunction, conjunction the, the floats in the lead anymore. I use a lot of stick lead pretty much all the time in my standard presentation. We used to make them out of spinner shaft, uh, stainless steel spinner shaft with hollow core one eighth ounce lead. That uh, is a five or six inch piece that's going to weigh just a little less than half an ounce. But now you can find a manufactured six, five, four inch down to three. If you can't find the length you want, you purchase uh, six inch leads. You know, you can cut them in half. They're, they're, uh, they got a connection point at either end. So you can fish that half lead. Really what it comes down to when you are coupling your lead with your floats is current speed, uh, speed of travel, speed of presentation. You want that float moving along at a constant state, not stopping and going in an unnatural presentation. We're matching the amount of lead to the current flow to keep almost a seamless constant flow albeit it's tapping the bottom just a little bit slows it down enough for a fish to you know check out what it is and engage um, but we really want a constant flow not a lot of stopping and going if you're constantly stopping you have too much lead um, you need to trim it back a little bit and uh, thereby increasing the speed of your presentation so what are we actually dragging along the bottom well you name it i mean anything you can drift fish you can pretty much bobber dog. We have yarnies, uh, little pom-pom yarnies are homemade. We have the resurgence of the oaky drifters. We got uh, soft beads, B&R beads work really well. Mercurial beads with the twist on capability so you can change your bead out, not always having to retie your leader. We're also doing or using uh, like WFO worms, very buoyant. Couple those with a corky or a cheater in a hook size that doesn't overweight your presentation. One thing about yarnies uh, that I really like to do where you can do so uh, based on your rules is incorporate some Atlas Mike's oil. We're adding scent to our, yar our yarnies. They're very um, absorbent. A little bit of oil on these or your rags or even putting some of the Potsky's uh, fire gel on your beads to add scent where it's okay to do so makes a huge difference. One thing to think about when you add any type of oil to a yarny or a rag or something like that is it is oil. Oil rises in water, much like adding corkies to your soft plastics in presentation. You look at the size of corky I have on here and, you know, it matches the size. Now it comes down to, I guess my point here is your leader length. If I have a really long leader, yeah, 30, 35, 36 inches, and I'm using a soft plastic that's very buoyant with a, with a corky, or I'm adding oils to my yarnies. Uh, typically, the, the buoyancy of this will increase when you add the oil, and when the uh, buoyancy increases, it's gonna float higher in the water column. If we have too long a leader, it's gonna float it up too high past the fish. So, if you're fishing these uh, yarnies, um, or a rag or something like that. And you're not gonna add oil, figure out what size leader you need to make that happen and keep it down in the zone. 
If you're adding oil, shorten your leader a little bit because it will raise it in the water column. Um, I want to talk real quickly here about, <clears throat> excuse me, hooks. The brand new and it's fantastic, the Gamagatsu bead hook. Now lurking here at the table, we have a size one aught, one and a number two. You're going to notice the curve on this hook. There is no straight part of that shank. It comes off of the eye and it actually goes into the bend right away. It's a wide gap hook. It's slick coated, so it has really easy uh, penetration and it goes deep and gets the hook uh, buried into the jaw of that fish way there on the bend of the shank. I mentioned it's a wide gap. It's also a thin wire hook. Thin wire hook, which allows it to be a lighter hook, but it's extremely strong. These actually came from the bass world, and we all know bass fishermen ladies are notorious for hook sets, and they're not bending these out on the tournament. So they've incorporated this into a bead style hook with a few modifications. Again, I really like it because it's an ultra strong thin wire. It's not going to overweight your presentation. In other words, your beads and your regs and your, your, your yarnies and worms and things, it's not going to weight them down and keep them down dragging along the bottom and getting uh, hung up. It's going to allow your buoyancy of your lure to do exactly what it's intended to do. Again, it has a wide gap, uh, ultra strong, and great penetration. Check out the new bead hooks by Gamakatsu. You can use them in a number of different uh, applications, not just for beads. Any of these items that I am bobber dogging, I'm using these new bead hooks. So now we got to tie all this stuff together. Bobber stops, lead, bobbers, uh, you know, different types of weights, all these different options as you're offering, scent, no scent, the whole thing. We are still here in the Bay Lab. I'm going to walk through now real quickly a couple different rigging options. The first rod here is a standard style of bobber dogging we've been doing for years. Now this is a uh, 1043. It's an 8 to 17, 10 and a half foot rod by Edge. It's the Black Widow series. Love this rod. It's ideal for all around steelhead fishing and works great for bobber dogging, helping mend your line and keep in control of your presentation. You're going to look here. If I can get that down here. We have. Again, that standard bobber dogging float. Uh, now, keep in mind, this needs to travel up the line. I have that bobber stop set about eight feet up the line because we want this float to travel and get plenty of line down in the water to where our lead is, again, dragging on the bottom. So this is a slip float. It's got an indicator on there so I can tell when it's maxed out against my stop. That's gonna travel on up. Now we're gonna take a look at the business end here. And again, stick lead, uh, this is just your standard barrel swivel with a snap. This isn't a three-way swivel. I do put a bobber stop right on top of that knot that the bead comes to rest against below that float. If in fact I got this hung up and it broke off on my main line or my top shot there, more times than not, I'm not gonna lose that float. So I keep that one pinned. Now I'm running about a 28 to 30 inch leader. Here is the rag pinned with a stopper and of course my bead hook, wide gap bead hook. Now, this is a single rig. Where it's okay to do so, you can also run a dual rig. And oftentimes guys ask how you tie that on. There's different loop knots and whatnot that you can utilize. I simply tie a, uh, a, a cinch knot on here to, uh, to make it work. And it's really easy to do. Maybe I can do that real quick here. We're gonna wrap that on here. I'm gonna come back around and pull that through so it's doubled up and then I'm simply going to make four uh, consecutive loops on here, or under here, okay? So we go over, under. This is a real quick knot. This is a good way to put that second presentation uh, if you're in an area that you can do so and um, you haven't already pre-rigged it. It's not gonna hinder the ability of the fish to grab this first uh, presentation believe it or not. They can still grab this yarny and uh, that hook's going to get into them. We just elongate that out and then we're going to cinch that down a little bit, pull that on there, I'm going to snip off that tail and um, there you go. That is now fishing a second presentation. I'm running that uh, yarny and then a second uh, rig trailing about 20 inches behind it is a smaller presentation and that's a dual rig that works, uh, that works very well um, if in fact you're in a spot that you can do that. So we're bobber dogging a dual rig in that regard. I'm just gonna try to set this down over here and get it out of the way. 
Now, the, uh, the dual rig ultralight version, a little more involved there uh, for sure. And um, I'm using a longer rod. I'm using this uh, Silver Widow by Edge Rods. It's an 1143. It's an 11 foot, four inch rod. Now, the way you rig this, you can have the float slipping up the line. I do have a bobber stop on here, okay? Um, but usually it's pinned fairly close to my initial weight. Um, but you can adjust that to get more uh, depth on your presentation by all means. Um, you just have a whole lot more going on here below the float for castability. Thereby, that's why I use a longer rod. Let's take a look at this one. So here's my bobber stop. It's only a foot or two above my lead. Now the difference is no stick lead here. I got an inline sinker. Okay, I got an inline sinker. And uh, that goes to my first section of leader, which I'm using 15 pound fluorocarbon. I never make that more than say 30 inches or so, because that is the first weight in the presentation. That goes to your second weight. Now, you can crimp on some split shot, you can crimp on some hollow core. I like to put this above my barrel swivel. Again, about 30 inches below that inline sinker, I have a piece of hollow core on my leader. I pin it with a bobber stop, put a protection bead. Now I have my swivel. Now this is gonna go down to my first terminal leader, okay? But this is the difference in this ultralight. Uh, setup is in fact that you are running an inline sinker to a 30 inch, 30 inch length bumper, so to speak. You can put it at 24, just something to have distance between your first and second weight. First weight's all about castability, second weight's all about getting your presentation down close to the area. This weight here will actually tick bottom from time to time. You're trying to avoid putting that heavy weight on the bottom, but this one, it's okay. So. We're gonna run this down and uh, stop it against that swivel. Like I said, I like to pin it so it doesn't slide. I use a bobber stop. Now we're going to a, uh, a shorter leader, if I can keep these from being tangled up. This is about a 20 inch leader to a very buoyant oaky drifter. That is also pinned with a bobber stop. And there's my bead hook. And then I just showed you how to tie that second hook on there, second leader on there. That goes again to about a 18 to 20, 20 inch leader or so to my mercurial bead. Remember, these ones are, in fact, the ones you can simply uh, twist off of your line if you choose to, to uh, change out your color or size of bead and presentation you're running. If you think you're gonna change that bead out all that often, I like to put it on the upper, uh, the, f the first one, the highest one in your presentation, because I can run a larger profile up higher and I like to taper it and run the smaller presentations down below if I'm, in fact, running a double rig. So. Really the differences here are same basic float setup, distance of travel of your slider or your float up your uh, top shot, and then you're either utilizing a standard stick lead and basic presentation we've been using for years, or you double, on, double down on your weight with the inline sinker, 30 inch bumper to your small piece of lead uh, crimped on or somehow held against your barrel swivel from your barrel swivel single or double presentation in liters. And I try to keep those really anywhere from 18 to 24 inches in between those at the most. Want to keep those somewhat close, but not too far away uh, as you end up with too much gear dragging on the bottom. So I know that was kind of rapid fire here, trying to show the differences in the short amount of time we got, but both of those are conducive to catching fish. They both work very well. I say give them a try. If you need more tips on how to rig those, just hit us up here at Fish Hunt Northwest, and we will clear those out for you. All right, jumping out for a quick break. We'll be back in studio right after this.